everyone, Board Game Brody here with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table like Dino Dynasty by Ion Game Design. Dino Dynasty is a tile placement dinosaur game where you become a certain dinosaur species from the Cretaceous period, the, the Cretaceous period, and you be you compete against others in various aspects of survival. Each game starts with a different kind of challenges out there, and then the game is focused on those specific challenges, and the player who completes the most of those wins the game. The game can be played with two to six players, takes about an hour to play, and it's recommended for ages 10 and up. This is a prototype version of the game, which has already been changed some to a degree, so know that things can still change with what you see here. The game starts with borders out on the table, and you will be placing out tiles that will gradually make a map of different biomes. The players will be moving their dinosaurs across the map to expand their territory, maybe creating new herds, or competing with other opponents. There are many ways to play this game, which can be one-time adventures, or you can play a campaign of five consecutive games where you save your progress and switch species inside of your current chosen dynasty to others. The game here says that you will defend, develop, diversify, and dominate in Dino Dynasty. So to begin, each player chooses a dinosaur that they would like to play as. These dinosaurs all fit into a dynasty, which are represented by the outside border color of the dino board. Players must choose a dinosaur in different dynasties when playing together. These are the tiles with different terrain types shown on them right here. These will be used to add on to the board during the game. Again, challenge cards are placed out and players need to read and focus on these and make them part of their strategy. Some will be map specific while others are more action specific. You will have a total of one more than the number of players playing in the game plus an additional challenge which will be the tiebreaker if it comes to that. You will choose which size map that you would like to play with, and within that size, you will choose one of the scenario cards, which will determine some of the board setup, which is performed in turn order, where you can either place a territory tile down on the T spaces, place an event biome on the E space, or place your herd on a territory tile with a question mark space. Your dino board will list the size of your starting herd, and when performing setup, players can start making strategies or strategic decisions as they choose which tiles to lay down and where. Players take turns in a clockwise order where you will begin your turn with hatching eggs from any nests. This is done by replacing any eggs of your player color with a dino of that same color. Then the active player will decide to perform one of four different actions. These actions are the main focus in the game, so let's go over them. But when doing them, you will also go to your individual dinosaur board and you will have four evolve markers which start in the indicated areas on your board, but can also be changed when you take your actions. And your action frames will be placed where the evolve markers cross on the grid. Each action area has a 3x3 three three area, so 9 different ways to change the action for your needs. And you change these by taking one of the 4 different actions, which is the evolve action. But let's start off with the spread action. Spread. You will select one herd, which is one group of your dinosaurs on a biome space, and you will add dinos to your herd and or make a nest in an empty biome one step away from your selected herd. Now, I should mention spaces are determined by changing biome. So when tiles are placed together with the same biome, they are considered the same space. But even on the same tile, if you move from one biome to another, then that's a new space. Anyways, back to this action. You will visit your dino board and see what type of spread action you can take. A slash here means that you can choose which one to do, while a plus means that you can do both. Eggs represent a nest, and if they survive a full round without another player stomping them, then they will automatically hatch at the beginning of your next turn. This is important as it will form a new herd with how many dinos as there are eggs in that new biome that you placed your nest in. Spreading out will be a good thing to do for several challenges, but also watch out as stomping nests can also be a challenge for players to master as well. 
but also makes it so that the player cannot grow and perform, you know, other actions to master other challenges out there as well. So players will always look to stomp other players' nests. Eggs and dinos are limited in the game, so remember that you should keep that in part of your strategy as well. Migrate is the next action we will talk about. You will draw and place one of the territory tiles placed out and then optionally move one herd one step onto a biome on that new tile. Or you can instead not place a tile and move one of your herds in any biome one step away. This is the action that will build the map. When placing a tile, you will see different colors and terrains, which are different biomes. And when placing a new tile down, it can be placed into any empty space without flipping the tile over to the other side. Setup randomizes what biomes will be available by randomly flipping over cards and having it shuffled to how it is. But you can rotate your chosen tile, and you might want to as at least one biome on one side of the tile has to match at least one biome on an adjacent tile. Now water can be placed to match any biome when it's placed, but not when it's already placed on the board, but when placing it. Herd movement is then done, so your, your move across biomes is what counts, not across tiles. Water cannot hold any herds, and movement is done orthogonally adjacent, never diagonal. When moving a herd, you will check your dino board for how many dinos can migrate with this action. If you have less dinos in a herd, you move them all. And if you have more, then you potentially make a new herd, moving the number of dinos indicated on your dino board. If a herd moves into a biome with another amount of your dinosaurs, then they merge into one big herd. A player can choose to move their herd into the same biome as another player. This makes that biome a rival biome. Now, this is not a compete action, so no fighting will occur, but instead the herds will coexist. If a player migrates into a biome with a nest, it is considered hidden and the nest is not destroyed. But as soon as the nest hatches, it's now a rival biome because both dinosaurs are in the same spot. Now, what's important about rival biomes is at the end of that player's turn, it will cause the active player to lose one of their dinosaurs in a rival biome. When placing out tiles, as you take a tile, an event tile might appear. You will place your current territory tile down, do its optional movement, and then you will roll the biome die for the event and place the revealed event tile covering a tile on the map that has the rolled biome shown on it. You will then carry out the event's effect. And there are one-time effects and permanent ongoing effects as well. One-time effects will have an effect on all the tiles within one tile. So the tile itself plus the eight surrounding tiles. And then permanent events represent shifts in nature or climate that can have different effects causing new types of biomes to, to form. After each event occurs, the aftermath effect triggers by rolling the aftermath die and potentially changing some biomes on the map, or even sometimes it adds a new challenge card. Morph tokens are then added as extreme conditions have generated some opportunities for the dinosaurs to morph. The compete die is rolled and the indicated number of morph tokens are placed on the event biome from the morph bag. Morph tokens are special abilities players can gain. A player can collect one as a free action at the end of their turn if they have a herd in an event biome with a morph token in it. Each dino board might have one or two pre-printed morph tokens already on it and can have three morph tokens in total. The morph tokens have some rules as to what size dino you can be to use its morph ability and what type of dynasty you are of. Morph tokens will add extra numbers to your herd size or movement or eggs that you lay in a nest or it affects its movement or how well it does in different biomes. On to the third possible action, which is evolve. You can change your action frames to take advantage of something during the game, but when evolving, you will upgrade in one action type, but downgrade in another. You have four fundamental characteristics in your species. It's size, how it reproduces, it's diet, and it's ability to adapt. When evolving, you will need to have a herd in the terrain type shown by the action frame to do this action on your dino board. 
you will want to compare your dinosaur to all the other players' dinosaurs and also determine where you want to be at times on your traits according to what challenges are out there. Fighting and being big is not everything in this game, but it can be something important to deal with. Lastly, the compete action. This is where you fight and where the fighting occurs. You will move one herd one step into an opponent's biome and attack their herd or nest if present there. The maximum size that you can attack with is determined by the migrate frame value. With the action, nests are automatically stomped and returned to the supply. If you are playing a game that has a challenge present that wants to reward stomping, then you can gain a stomp token as well for that. When herds attack each other, each herd will determine that herd's strength. This is done by counting the herd size, adding that to your compete frame value, and then you roll two compete dice and add those values to form a total strength value. The other player does the same, and the player with the lower strength removes the difference in dinosaurs from their herd, returning it to their supply. If players both have dinos in the biome after an attack, the two players will then be rivals in the biome with the attacker losing one dino at the end of their turn. If a player becomes extinct as they have no more dinos on the board, which can be done by an opponent attacking you or by an event, then lucky you, as some eggs survived, hidden remotely, and they hatch and give your species a new chance. They will place their starting number of dinos in an empty biome of their choice. All trackers and morph tokens at that time will stay the same. Players continue taking actions until the board is filled with tiles, and as soon as that happens, one of the in-game cards are drawn, and all can see this card. It shows a condition. And whenever that condition is met, all players then have one last turn and the game then ends. Each challenge is then looked over and the winner is determined and wins that card. If two or more players are tied for a challenge, then the tiebreaker challenge is used. The player who has completed the most challenges or wins with the tiebreaker if multiple players tie with the most challenges, then they win the game. And, well, that's Dino Dynasty. It's a dino game about competing for the challenges the best that you can while adapting to your opponents, including their tactics, but also their dinosaurs. Also adapting your own dinosaur to do certain actions better and trying to dominate on the board. It's not always the big and better fighting dinosaur that wins this game, but it's really a game of making strategic decisions according to what challenges are out there. I like how the game is based off of real facts. So the dinos act like their real type of dinosaur, and then they can change and adapt as time goes on. Each action represents about 100,000 years, so when herds move or they change, this is really change that has taken years and years and years to be able to do. Now, if you didn't know, you can play this game as a team mode where you and another player work together as different dinosaurs to compete with others to get the most challenges together. So you take your actions like normal, but you obviously don't, you know, want to tackle each other directly or compete with your partner. Then you have a campaign type game where you will start with the small map as you play. The map gets bigger and bigger, and then you can change your stats so that you can change your dinosaurs within your dynasty to get better dinosaurs to play against your opponents. And then you'll play five games changing what you think you need to do to be the most successful within that campaign. I haven't been able to play the game all too much as I wanted to hurry and get this video out, but there looks to be a lot of variability with the different numbers of dinosaurs that you can play as. Also, things will change when you face off against other types of dinosaurs. And then you have the different challenges that set the stage for your strategy. Within all of that, the game allows you to adapt and change to try bigger and better things. This might be to complete a challenge easier or to just compete with the other players better, fighting them better maybe. So there is all that. Plus, your action doesn't really get too complicated in the game. You are doing one of four different actions. You might modify these actions due to morph tokens to have a better, you know, advantage in the game. And some games might push you to take, you know, some actions more than others. But it's a game with easy to understand rules, but some harder and tougher choices when it comes to the strategy part. Although, 
really you just want to you know win challenge cards and you will be comparing yourself to the other players to be able to compete for those cards the best way you can the theme is right on for me the complexity will allow me to play this with my kids the strategy will keep me playing the game over and over because there's you know good replayability in it as well events happen in the game that change things up so it's not always the same thing over and over again and big events can cause a devastating change to occur to make a little swing in the game in another direction again this is brody with let's table it where we get games to the table please like and subscribe to our channel we are working hard to bring to you videos like this one so that you can see if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table